Welcome everyone, I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions and founder of Brave Kids Books, which is why we are here today. We have a mission around here to wake the world up to what's possible. And here today to help me with that mission are a couple of the amazing authors of a new book that we have coming out. This one is our very first children's story collaboration. It's called Brave Kids, Short Stories to Inspire Our Future World Changers. And before I introduce the authors to you today, let me just say a huge thank you to KJ Kashula. Kelly is the lead author of this amazing collection of stories and really the reason we are all here. Um, Kelly, thank you so much. Thanks for the idea, the mission behind this book and for being the genuinely free and beautiful spirit that you are. Um, I love you so much. I'm so grateful to have you in my world and really, really excited about putting your beautiful words and, and also artwork into the world. And Kelly is an amazing illustrator, amazing storyteller. So can't wait to show you guys this book. So we're gonna to talk to a couple of the authors today. Lori Weed is a healer, writer, and children's story author who works with God in everything she does. She is here to serve and help with the shift in consciousness. Mayor Lemus is an expert in fascia who wants every kid in the world to know what it is. I'm with you, Mayor. She now helps people create their own real life adventures as a wellness travel agent. Cool. I'm going to have to talk to you about that later. So we're going to start this party with Lori. Lori, tell us about the story that you shared in Brave Kids. Um, well, I did the magic in, or chapter 16, the magic inside, uncovering the superhero within. And it's basically a little boy that uh, is empathic and he doesn't know it. Most of us don't. Um, I try to keep it a little uh, of a learning thing and where the parents, you know, most of the parents don't realize they have an empathic kid. But his first beginning awareness of his intuition and guidance from within. So that's uh, my story. I am so excited that you brought that topic in because I think if my parents or teachers knew about that at another level about being empathic and what that means inside of somebody it would have changed my world what else do you want to say about that why is it important that people understand this um besides for the child feeling very different and being told they're wrong which sets an empath back uh or locks them up something like that uh for far too long um they're really misunderstood uh this little boy is kind of being pegged as being a daydreamer but it's too much energy around him at times versus his mind on other things um i think it's really important we see that and i wanted to bring in more uh ways for communication because we think we know what somebody's doing from a visual sometimes but we don't have a clue uh, and the only way to find out is talk about it. Yes. Um, for our viewers or listeners today, um, can you just give us a brief, like, what is an empath? What does that mean? An empath is picking up other people's emotions um, or the emotions of people around you or energy in the air, like you can feel a storm coming. Um, and a, an empath person or child doesn't realize that some of that, what they're picking up and feeling like maybe even a tummy ache might not be their own. Um, so generally an empath is more uh, and of an introvert, quiet, because they're overwhelmed with feelings all the time, especially in large groups of people. So Thank I hope you. that explains it right. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I understand it and I know what it is, but I really, truly love hearing different people talk about it in the way that you're talking about it, because it'll help somebody who might recognize something in their kid and think differently about what is happening, which is 
kind of the reason for this book in general with all of the lessons. Right. Lori, thank you so much for being in the project and being here today. Thank you. It's, it's, um, I'm overwhelmed with this book, the authors, the caring. It's phenomenal. And I appreciate being a part of it very much so more than I can express. Thank you. All right, Mayor, tell us about your beautiful story that you shared in Brave Kids. Um, well, it's a story about fascia, and I feel like it's really important for the whole world to know what it is, but especially children, because not only along with fascia, but the principles of myofascial release. Um, so one of the guiding principles is giving yourself permission to feel. And those words were like gold to me when John Barnes said them. It was like, wow. I had no idea. Like my whole life, I sort of had been taught to hide or pretend or shove things down. And it was the first time I really had permission just to feel whatever came up. And I feel like that's so important for kids to have that. So incredibly important. And you and I share a teacher in John Barnes, and we've both been through a lot of training. So this is Oh, holy moly, this is a subject I could sit and talk about all day long. Um, one of my favorite, but same for me, um, permission to feel. And I mean, feel everything from the worst uh, feelings of anger all the way to the most ecstatic feelings of joy, right? And just that entire world opened up for me. Um, so for a kid, like what's the one thing you want them to know about fascia if you had to pick one thing i know there's a lot of things just that we wouldn't be alive without it that it's as important as your heart your lungs anything any part of your body that it's important to know but it's connected to every part of your body um and when it gets stuck tight or twisted it affects our life and so we need to treat it. We need to pay attention to it. We need to talk to it. We need to communicate with it. The more we do that, the more the body will respond with giving you more information. And Mayor, what is it? Tell, tell our viewers what fascia is. Um, it's connective tissue. So it surrounds every, every um, fiber that we have inside our body down to the <laughs> cellular level. You guys so know. So it's like a magical web. That's a magical web. I like that definition for sure. <laughs> you guys know when you pull up the skin on a piece of chicken, uh, that raw chicken, okay, and that white webby stuff, you can see that it connects. That's connective tissue. That's the fascia. Mm -hmm. And living beings have that, right? Um, so I love, I love understanding about this magic. Um, Mayor, I want to stick with you for this next question. Why, you know... We could help kids be a lot of things, but why does helping kids be brave matter to you? I think it's just having the resources that maybe weren't available to us as children um, and just a new paradigm of thinking, I think that was important. I remember when I was like six years old playing in a tree and I'm like, I'm going to remember what it feels like to be a kid. Um, so I think it's just agency and, and knowing that they're important, that their feelings matter, that they matter. And if they have a sense of that, um, they can live their purpose without some of the clutter. Yeah, and that clutter is a thing right now, isn't it? For I think our culture. Yeah, say more about that. Well, and they're dealing with things that we never had to, like school shootings and being so busy and not having time to daydream and just do nothing and connect to themselves. It's just a different world for them. So I think having these resources is really helpful. You're making me uh, talking about the tree. You're making me have a little flash to um, times in my childhood where that was the entertainment, you know, rather than picking up this, you know, mm -hmm. um, and figuring out how to climb it and then, you know, mm -hmm. getting up there and having a perspective of the, of the big world from the top of the tree. Yeah. Um, and how like fun that was. I remember there was a store you could see if I climbed high enough, there was a store I could see. And it was like, and John Barnes talks about that, like getting lost in the forest. He would like play a game with himself and go get lost and figure out how to come back. And um, we're a part of nature. And I think that's a, a huge piece of it too, is not to forget that we are nature. Mm -hmm. um, and for kids to grow up with that sense that they're connected to nature, I think is really important. And you guys are going to read a nature theme in this book too, because I think a lot of the 
um, healers and practitioners and amazing people who are writing in this book understand the nature as a foundational connection to that that bigger source of energy. So I love that that's throughout in little bits and different ways. I love how you guys are writing about it. And I want to just say thanks to both of you, you know, for saying yes to this and then stepping up in, in the beautiful ways that you did to give perspective. And the kids are going to love hearing these stories, but you're giving beautiful gifts to their parents and grandparents and caregivers and teachers who will have these real these lessons that i think really matter um so thank you both for that and i think those stories is kind of like a disney movie it's for adults too and it it's is. for mm -hmm. their kid that didn't get nurtured or um validated so it's about being seen and heard yes absolutely for the, for the big kids too no doubt. So Lori, mm -hmm. tell me uh, the answer to this same question. Why does kids helping kids be brave matter to you? Um, I guess because that's what I noticed. That was my uh, courage was what got me through that and my personal belief of, uh, of God or the creator. For some reason, I always knew it was there. And um, I had to be courageous in many different situations, but even courageous to trust the good things or to, you know, reach out and do something different. Um, but for everything that Marianne just said, uh, with the, what the kids are facing today, it's phenomenally more difficult on levels that we can't even comprehend, I think. Uh, Cause we had that, you know, outside was our playground. We were able to connect to nature more often. Um, there was still peer pressures and things, but not like there is today. I mean, uh, I remember in schools, we didn't, uh, the teacher didn't tell us who she voted for when we learned about voting. That's altogether different today. You know, everybody's opinion is so strong, um, but they need more help today than we ever did. And we needed it back then. So um, I just feel it's, they are our future. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, you said you needed to be courageous. What I love about the book is um, you know, I think Kelly writes either in or on the book that it, it's not about having a superhero cape so much or a steel shield. It's these little things where courage shows up and all of the ways, again, that y'all wrote about it. Um, but Lori, for you, what did that courage look like when you had to have it? What did that mean for you personally? Probably the majority of the time I was scared out of my mind <laughs> and had to trust my instinct. Um, About what? Oh, uh, what I needed to do to survive to the sec next second, maybe, or that minute. Um, there's plenty of times. Um, A lot of those ones, uh, how to survive to the next minute. Uh, but it, it took courage to decide to, well, for example, I was definitely different than my siblings and my home. I recall my older sister saying one day to the other sister and mother that I was not like them. And they're right. It took a lot to just keep being me sometimes. I really love that example so much because I think the level of courage it takes to be your full on self when you feel very different is difficult. I really yeah. do I really appreciate that example. Um, so sticking with you for a minute on this next one, what would be one thing that you want parents and caregivers to know about how they can help their kids grow up to be awesome adults. I, I think I love that example so much. I would ask you specifically, 
if your parents could have helped you be your full on awesome self, what would be that one way you think would help them do that for you? Um, instead, I'm going to flip it to how did I help my daughter be her full on self? Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, because it's hard to change what is sometimes and some things that you might want to change just can't. So we can't go back and change the past. Um, well, mostly. <laughs> but um, what I did with her is reminded her daily how wonderful she was as who she was, not because of what she looked like. She's a pretty girl, but she doesn't you know, use it, so to speak. Um, but her intelligence, her um, generosity, her curiosity, and it really fueled the curiosity. Uh, I changed from being lost when, you know, we had to go places and it's always been just the two of us and I would take a wrong turn. Instead of being lost, I told her we were on an adventure. So I, I think the whole thing is, is, is to feed them so many good things about who they are and what they naturally are curious about. Um, I don't know that, that when the bad things happen, they still have a full account. You know, they have a, it's like a bank, you know, I put in so many good things. And for people in general, um, with adults, I speak to their inner child. And I think an adult, try to remember how you were at that time, or like if you got in trouble or your, your kid's doing something, you know, you want to create a good adult. What's the best way to handle this? And it's not always just to say, oh, well, he'll grow out of it. It's not important. Um, limitation and direction are very important to a child, but how you pull it off might matter. Um, and that when you look at how would you want to be treated in this situation with the discipline, um, you tend not to then ridicule the person. You do talk more about the action and then explain why this is probably not a great idea. But um, being heard is the number one thing I see everybody on the planet lacking. Uh, we all need to be heard. There's things that uh, we don't say to people, which is, you know, makes sense. If they're so sensitive, you know, you have to have that trust level. But uh, between parent and child, being heard is one. And I will say I do make the mistake of not hearing my daughter at 20, or I mean, 31 now. She's not in her 20s. Um, still sometimes, but uh, yeah. that is it's so important. important. It's mm -hmm. so important. And I, um, I think adding in, we're all going to make the mistakes and it's okay. We, yeah. we're going to make mm -hmm. parenting mistakes almost every day. And, but to, um, just practice the awareness is already you're above and beyond most people. So to even think about, okay, how can I help her be heard today and give the structure and the discipline and make them a part of that conversation. Um, right. Yes, Lori, thank you. Marilyn, what would you add to this, um, this conversation? What's that thing that you want parents and caregivers to know about how they can help their kids grow up to be awesome adults? That um, feelings are okay. Um, one of the principles of myofascial release is a technique called unwinding, where you just allow your body to feel whatever comes up and you let your body move in whatever way. And the first time I saw this, I thought, why would anyone publicly embarrass themselves? <laughs> <laughs> um, but what it showed me is I was like so ashamed of my feelings that I wanted to pretend I didn't have them. And so I want kids to know that whatever they feel is okay. And however their body wants to move is okay. And there's no feeling that's too overwhelming. It's the resistance of feeling that creates the overwhelm. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, that's so important. I'm sitting here thinking about unwinding in general, because to see unwinding and we can we can tell you guys a little bit about what that is, just so you know what we're talking about. But to see it happen in front of you can be weird. 
and a little shocking sometimes and a little like what is happening but if you know what's happening you won't react like that and you can kind of hold a safe space for the kid or even the adult that's unwinding a little bit but mayor do you want to try to explain it in a simple way I think it just goes, it's a totally different paradigm and it goes against everything we're taught as a culture to keep it together, to be strong, uh, to put on your big girl panties, like all these messages that we get to deny what we're feeling. Um, Mm -hmm. And so it takes all that off. You take the brakes off and let go. So it's all about surrender and trusting. So over the process of my training, it was like for me to grow out of my comfort zone, I need to get on stage. And it's like, who am I? Now I'm up there and the sense of relief to be supported and held in that vibration is beyond amazing. Yes, it is transformational, definitely. And Um, a piece of that superpower. So the title is like the body secret superpower. And really it is because you become your own healer. You're not dependent on anyone outside of you. You are connected to yourself in a way that might have got exiled as a kid because you learned those parts are unacceptable. I'll never show them. And they get hidden away. But it's a really important part of us. And our feelings are our guidance system. And so they're nothing Mm -hmm. to be ashamed of. There's something to be connected to. So it's just a good way a practice just to check in with yourself every day. Yeah, what a um, what a big thing to say, you know, those feelings that you're afraid to show are actually the thing that's gonna make the most difference for you in life if you connect to them in a powerful Mm -hmm. way. It's like our built-in guidance system. And that gets like deactivated when we're kids, unfortunately. And we've been taught to go in the other direction from feeling, so think about that for a minute, you guys. Like, how can we help our kids feel more? And And I think parents feel overwhelmed by their kids' feelings, but if they they don't need to do anything, they just need to be a witness of them just to witness. And like even silence of like, I see you, I hear you. It, it, it's just, it's like inborn, it's natural, but we've gotten so far away from our true nature. So the other principle of myofascial release is to be your authentic self. And that's going to be different for everybody. Really important topic. And again, that's a juicy one, right? (laughs) Let me stick with you here for this last question I have for both of you. This is a big question. Um, You know, and uh, you both touched on it a little bit already, but this generation of kids is faced with a world that is much different than the one their parents and grandparents grew up in. We talked about that. Um, things can feel very overwhelming and scary at times for both the kids and the people that love them and are taking care of them. So Mayor, what matters the most to you in terms of shaping the future for our kids? Uh, Just to be connected to their feelings and stay connected to them. I think in some ways they're ahead of us, like they're more evolved, like they get things, like you don't have to explain stuff, like we can learn from them. And I think that's an important piece to remember is like, they are the wisdom keepers now. And what are they here to share? They came here for a reason and it's important. I think if parents can open up to what you just said, it'll be a massive game changer. Because I looked at my kids from the beginning as my teachers, not that I had a whole lot of stuff to teach them, but all the (laughs) things they were teaching me, like Mm -hmm, when you flip mm -hmm, that a little, your whole world is going to change. And what you've been taught about how to parent yes. is going to change. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Big potato stuff. Mayor. I think the other thing that's really different that's beautiful is like parents have access to their kids. Like we didn't have phones where they could check up on us or no, like my life was kind of secret. You know, I just kept things to myself. Whereas now I'm like amazed at how much kids are willing to share with their parents. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, they actually have classes in college now, like how to separate from your kids. Whereas my mom and dad were like, bye. (laughs) (laughs) It's so true. Uh, that's funny. I'll have to ask my college age daughter if she's seen that class in her curriculum. (laughs) (laughs) No, the orientation. Like when they drop them off, literally, like, how do you, how do you separate from your children? Yeah. It's a totally different paradigm. I felt it for sure. I had Mm -hmm. trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, thank you, Mayor. Lori, for you on this, this question, so what matters the most to you in terms of shaping this future for our kids? Uh, well, first, I want to say I agree completely with everything the two of you just were talking about. Um, and I learned from my daughter as well quite a bit. In fact, she, she is my inspiration. Uh, I watched how much natural things we do come into this planet with. I think we've always done that, but I do agree that nowadays the children being born are coming in as Abraham Hicks had worded it, tapped in, turned on, tuned mm -hmm. in, or however mm -hmm. she says that. Okay, so I think that's for sure. Um, so I do think we're gonna learn a lot from them. I do think we're still here to protect them. Our job of the grownups right now is protecting them and making way for them to move forward, um, which is going to be a challenge, has been a challenge. I think we've been doing it for the last 20 years-ish, if not more. Um, we're really actually a young culture. If you think about like, I think the Humane Societies were started before Child Protection Services, and that was like in the 1970s. So it's, if you think that, well, it's not that long ago, well, it doesn't feel that long ago to me, maybe to young people. But um, yeah, I just think it's important that we continue to try to protect them. And that doesn't mean mold them though. Um, I do also think we need to create more opportunities where we don't look at uh, slips of paper as being education, sometimes experiences education, and sometimes they come in with a very strong uh, knowing of something, but because they're not good at math, they're held back and it kind of throws everything off or they're not good at the grammar of English and it throws everything off for them. So I just think our job is to make way for the children in any way that we can. I love that about experience being the teacher. It's uh, certainly been the case for me. I think I've learned way more <laughs> right. than I ever did in school. That's one thing I want to um, mention too, is in the training myofascial release, we learn in nature on the rocks. That's a really important part of our education and it's experiential. And I'm such a fan of experiential learning, even traveling, going to other countries, going to the post office in a different country, like just these simple everyday activities we can learn from when we have like a, a open mind. Um, but I am just so moved by and so grateful for the fact that we got to learn on the rocks in Sedona. That to me was an incredible way of learning. And it um, it really shifts the way we're learning like inside a building. Like I, I, I hope to see that transform. Yes, definitely. You're giving me a picture of some kids in a garden, which mm -hmm. uh, was a real scene that I saw. And I thought, yes, mm -hmm. like yeah. get their hands dirty. Mm -hmm. and, you yeah. know. Get them outside, yes. Yeah. Um, Mayor and Lori, thank you so much for what you do in the world. And thanks for being here today to share it with everyone. I can't wait for the world to read your beautiful stories in this book and all the stories that we have collected. Um, I really appreciate what you do and just for walking the walk every day like you do. And you guys, if I know you heard something today that maybe made you curious, you wanna know a little bit more about, gave you the goosebumps, just drop down into the show notes. I've, I have Mare and Lori hooked up there with a link. You can connect with them. These are so much more than books, y'all. It's a community that really cares about you and helping you move forward in that next step. So please reach out, explore their sites, see all the awesomeness that they are up to. And remember to join us for our book launch party for Brave Kids. That's gonna be Saturday, May 6th at 11 Eastern. I'm going to be gathering with all of the authors and we're going to be doing some fun giveaways that day. You're going to find all the info and Zoom link down below. It's going to be on the Brave Healer Productions Facebook page. And if you happen to be listening to this interview after that May 6th date, then hop over to Amazon because that means our book is ready and you can purchase your copy. Um, lastly today, everyone, remember your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it is time 
to be brave. See you next time, everyone. Thank you, ladies. Thank you.